Arthur Kipps, a young London lawyer, arrived at the train station. He was on a mission, one that would take him far from the bustling streets of London to a place shrouded in mystery and whispers. The name of the place was Crithen Gifford, a small rural town that seemed to be frozen in time. The platform was bleak and windswept, with only a handful of other passengers. The air was thick with an eerie silence, broken only by the occasional whistle of the wind. All of them avoided his eyes. Something felt wrong. There was a palpable sense of unease that seemed to hang over the place like a dark cloud. He hired a horse-drawn carriage for the journey to Eel Marsh House, a place he had only heard about in hushed tones. The road soon became a muddy track, and fog rolled in, thick and cold. The landscape around him grew more desolate with each passing mile. The driver, a burly man, wouldn't speak. His silence was unsettling, adding to the growing sense of dread that Arthur felt. The carriage lurched to a stop, and Arthur saw a house in the distance. It was an imposing structure, standing alone in the middle of nowhere. It looked more like a ruin, perched on an island, cut off by the rising tide. The house seemed to be waiting, watching. The fog swirled around it like a shroud. Dread filled Arthur's heart. He couldn't shake the feeling that he was being drawn into something far beyond his understanding, something dark and foreboding. The house was even worse up close, dark decaying walls, windows like empty sockets. The wind howled through the gaps in the roof, sounding like a chorus of screams. Arthur shivered, he entered the house. Dust lay thick on everything, cobwebs hung from every corner. The air was stale and musty, filled with the scent of decay. Arthur coughed, his footsteps echoing in the silence. He felt a presence here, something unseen, watching him. He explored the house. Each room was colder and darker than the last. Shadows seemed to move in the corners of his vision, he was not alone in this house. Days turned into nights. Arthur worked on the estate papers, he couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Every creak of the floorboards, every sigh of the wind, sent shivers down his spine. He started seeing things, fleeting glimpses of a figure, a woman, dressed in black. The villagers wouldn't speak of her. Their faces turned white at the mention of her name. The woman in black. They said she haunted the marshes, that she brought misfortune and death. One evening he saw her clearly, standing across the causeway shrouded in fog, her dress was black as night, she was real. He discovered a hidden room, locked, untouched for years. Inside toys, children's clothes, and a diary. The room seemed frozen in time, a silent witness to a forgotten past. The diary of the woman in black. Its pages were filled with sorrow and secrets, each word a whisper from the grave. Her name was Janet Humphrey. Her story unfolded. A tale of a woman wronged, her heart heavy with grief. A story of love, loss, and a terrible revenge. Her pain was palpable, her sorrow etched into every line of her face. Janet had lived in the house. It was once filled with laughter, now it stood as a monument to her suffering. Her son, drowned in the marshes. The waters claimed him, leaving Janet's heart shattered. She blamed her sister, who had adopted the boy. The betrayal cut deep, turning love into bitterness. Blamed the villagers who did nothing to save him. Their inaction sealed their fate in her eyes. She died, consumed by grief and rage, her spirit, restless, unable to find peace. Now, her spirit haunted the marshes, a ghostly presence forever bound to the place of her greatest sorrow. Janet's diary spoke of a curse, a dark promise of vengeance from beyond the grave. Every time she was seen a child in the village would die. Her vengeance knew no bounds, sparing no one. Arthur realized the villagers' fear was real. The curse was not just a story, but a living nightmare. The fog descended thicker than ever. Arthur felt a presence in the house, cold, angry. He knew she was here. He heard a scream, a child's scream, coming from the nursery. He ran towards the sound, his heart pounding. He threw open the door. The room was in chaos. The rocking chair swayed violently. And there, hovering over the crib, was the woman in black. Her veil was lifted, revealing a face twisted in anguish and rage. Her eyes blazed with a cold fire. Arthur held up a toy train. Janet, your son is at peace. For a moment the rage in her eyes seemed to flicker. The house shook violently. The wind howled through the cracks and crevices, making the old structure groan under the pressure. The woman in black let out a wail of despair that echoed through the halls. Her ghostly figure flickered, and then, she vanished into the mist. The fog that had enveloped the house began to lift, revealing the eerie silence that followed. 
The sun broke through the dark, ominous clouds, casting rays of light that pierced the gloom. It was as if the house itself was taking a breath after a long, suffocating night. Arthur stood there, trembling, the toy train clutched tightly in his hand. His knuckles were white from the grip, and his eyes were wide with fear and disbelief. He had confronted the woman in black, the source of so much pain and sorrow. The encounter had left him shaken to his core, but had he appeased her restless spirit? The question gnawed at him, leaving him in a state of perpetual unease. He left Eel Marsh House, his steps heavy with the weight of what he had experienced. He never looked back, not even once, as if afraid that doing so would pull him back into the nightmare. He tried to forget the horrors he had witnessed, but the memories clung to him like a dark shadow, always lurking at the edge of his mind. The memory of the woman in black, her face contorted in grief and fury, haunted him day and night. Her sorrow was now his burden to bear. He knew deep down that some wounds can never truly heal. The scars left by the encounter were etched into his soul. The woman in black may have been laid to rest, her spirit finally finding some semblance of peace. But her story served as a warning to all who dared to disturb the restless spirits of the past. The house stood as a testament to the unresolved anguish that lingered within its walls.